The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. to the max monday night raw review hello and welcome to the wrestling to the max monday night raw review my name is brandon biscobing i will be your host for tonight and hey three nights in a row we're pulling off the trifecta and tomorrow it'll be the quadfecta joining me as she has for the last two days liz puglisi how's it going liz Good, Brandon. How you doing? Ah, not too shabby. Uh, yeah, so this is the Money in the Bank Fallout show, and uh, let's get right into it. So the opening segment scheduled for two beatdowns. Two beatdowns? <laughs> no, wait, three beatdowns, really. If oh, you count the... well, f- more like five beatdowns if you count all <laughs> three refs. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You're right. Um, and Harry's going to give me super flack for doing this after I never uh, reciprocate him whenever he does it uh, on SmackDown. (laughs) This one actually makes more sense, Harry, so shut up. (laughs) Um, Sees uh, Kurt Angle in the ring with the table set up with both the women's money in the bank briefcase and the women's title uh, on the table. He brings out the new women's champion, which is Alexa Bliss. Um, First off, have you seen all the people? Rightfully so. I actually agree with them more on this than I than I have in recent history when it's come with Roman. How some people are finally starting to realize that Bliss is a female Roman. Why do you think Bliss is the female Roman? Because look at how many opportunities and pushes she's gotten in spite of the fact that she's only mediocre in the ring. I I mean, it happens with a lot of, I mean, she's, she's, you can't deny that she's not great on, you know, really, at least really good on the mic. Oh, I'll agree with that. I don't think, um, she's, she's basically the female Miz. I mean, sh- oh, Miz, let's not start that because we're going to get into a huge argument and the thing will be like two hours. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Okay. Um, uh, you know, all right, Charlotte is all right, better in the ring, but she really sucks on the mic. So it balances out. I mean, Charlotte keeps getting opportunities when she can't really talk. She's not the complete package either. Eh, I don't- Charlotte, I mean, she's been out of the title picture for, you know, a little she's, while but, now, but just but just like Roman, every time it's mentioned, she's right there. True, right there. I'll give you that. I don't, I don't see Alexa being the the um the female Roman. What this is is again, the fans didn't get what they wanted, and so now they're bitching. Yeah, I mean, well, I can see the point a little bit, but really, it's. They have, I mean, if these are the same people that loved Alexa, loved Alexa, loved Alexa, you know, bliss, 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 and now it's, oh, we didn't get what we wanted, and she doesn't deserve it. Well, to be fair, I've never liked Alexa, so. Moving on. Uh, she comes out and does, and, and grabs the title, and, you know, Kurt very quickly just hands it to her, she's like, let's just get this over with, pretty much. Uh... But Alexa goes on her whole, uh, what she's been known for in recent history of her faux, uh, faux face promos of starting off sounding like oh, she's so appreciative and all of this and then turning it around like that. Um, we get that and then, um... Oh, before that, um, a- after Kurt hands her the title, he... He tells her that Naya has invoked a rematch cl- clause for uh, for Extreme Rules, so that will be the match at Extreme Rules, as I predicted last night. Um, and then shortly following this, guess who decides to come out? 
none other than the baddest woman on the planet, Ronda Rousey. She comes out, she wants to go after, uh, she, she wants to go after Alexa, uh, right off the, uh, right, right off a, uh, right off the bat. It, it was kind of mm-hmm. interesting, I'm not really all that surprised, especially with how well Rousey has been doing, but we got a very loud We Want Ra- we want Ronda chant going, mm-hmm. uh, during this, which is nice to see that she isn't getting any bad backlash. Um, so she comes out, she wants to go after Alexa, but Kurt holds her back, and Bliss, you know, talks down to her and everything. Rousey finally breaks through, beats down on Alexa. Kurt grabs her and picks her up and tries to drag her away, very forcibly, might I add, which is kind of surprising, right. considering it is the, you know... PGPC WWE era. I'm very surprised that they allowed Kurt to put that much force into that. Um, but Ronda return uh, returns the favor by knocking Kurt down and then proceeding to go after Alexa. Alexa tries to get get the ti- get the uh, briefcase and hit Rousey with it, but uh, Rousey reverses it and proceeds to beat. Alexa down with the briefcase. Uh, Kurt once again tries to get involved, and he gets hit with the with the briefcase as well. And she goes after him. I couldn't fully hear. Maybe you heard it. She was like, "You're not really my friend," but I didn't hear like what else she said. When they were still in the ring, or when they were in the back? Yeah, when they were still in the ring. She like after she hit him with the briefcase, she was like, "You're not really my friend." Say? And then like you, she was saying other things, but I couldn't fully hear it. I think she was trying. I I think it was something like you know, why is she why is he protecting her? I wasn't yeah. I wasn't sure. I didn't really no, hear it okay. either. Yeah, I couldn't really hear it too much either. Um, then some refs come in, and ref the, uh, Rousey looks like she's gonna back off, and then she decides to beat them up too. Uh, and she just went on a complete rampage here, which was awesome. And it f- was finalized with a power bomb through, uh, power bombing Alexa through the table. Um, so what do you think of this? Um, honestly, um, first people's feelings about bliss, you know, aside, I thought it was a great opening. Oh yeah. I thought it was one of the best openings we've seen, you know, in a while. Um, I was told, I mean, in anybody who actually may listen to us, we're still waiting to find out, <laughs> um, knows that I was not sold on Ramba, you know, from the get-go. And But like I've said, she's really, you know, pro- proven herself. And, um, you know, I know that they want to, you know, keep her looking, you know, badass and, and everything. So, in a way to keep her, you know, not on the excuse on having the show was to suspend it. But I think it worked, you know, really, you know, well. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody likes seeing a, a beat down happen, especially when it's a good one. I mean, oh, yeah. Excuse me. She took it to everybody. Her facial expressions were ones I thought were, you know, really great and, and dead on. Um, it was my favorite opening segment. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, people made this comparison from the get go, especially with how she was feuding against Stephanie from the beginning. But she's really shown that if they allow her to go all out, she really could become the female Stone Cold, and she yeah. could really become that like badass who just does not care on the women's side, and. She could really elevate the women's division and the company as a whole, I think. If allowed, if given the right ammo and the right opportunities and having that line, you know, much closer for her than it is for everyone else. And I think we kind of saw that tonight already. So hopefully it's a good sign. Uh, Like you mentioned, afterwards we get a backstage segment uh, where Rousey is continuing to yell at Kurt, saying she gets that this isn't the UFC, but and she's sick of everyone telling her this. 
Um, Kurt says he understands that, but he has no choice after this to suspend her for 30 days. And she may have no chance at becoming uh, Raw Women's Champion. Um, even though we, I, I think we all know that she will. Um, mm-hmm. hate, hate to break it to everyone. Um, going to break the fourth wall a little bit here. But uh, this is all to allow Rousey to, uh, to take some time off to go back to the Performance Center and further hone mm-hmm. her craft. So that come SummerSlam, she can have a full on, you know, fifteen, twenty, however many minute mat long match that she's gonna have with either Naya or Alexa, based on who has the title, following Extreme Rules. Yeah, yeah and it makes sense, and it's, it's a great way to do it rather than just not have her there. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so that was the opening segment. Um, Coming back, um, Renee tries to interview Rousey, and she shrugs her off, and then she she says she'll be back after these 30 days, and whether it's Alexa as champ or not, she's going to kick her her ass. Yeah. Like I mentioned, you know, them allowing her to do more, um, I think, as long as they continue it, she, you know, she's already proven herself that she can right. do this, you know, bar none already. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the the sky's the limit for her at this point. Uh, Seth Rollins is out, uh, and he gets on the mic. He says, you know, it's heating up here tonight. It's, there's some craziness going on. Uh, and he wants to keep it going. Last night, Elias took him to the limit, and he loved every second of it. But he's still standing tall, and he's still the Intercontinental Champion. He's a fighting champion. And, hey, open challenge tonight. And Dolph Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler comes out. Uh, then Drew McIntyre comes out, and you're like, okay, who's going to be the one to take it? And it ends up being Dolph Ziggler. So the opening contest scheduled for one fall. One fall. Is the WWE Intercontinental Championship match between Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. This was a solid match. Um, not as good as both of these guys could do, definitely. You could, you would definitely, you could definitely see better from both men, but, you know, this was a solid match. Uh, the end results, uh, with, um, McIntyre getting up on the apron... And Seth trying to go after him, and as a result, uh, Ziggler gets the tries with the O'Connor roll. Um, he fails, but Rollins tries to do one of his own, but Dolph ends up reversing it and getting a handful of tights, and he wins through shenanigans, and Dolph becomes the new Intercontinental Champion. Uh, what? what do you think of this match before we talk about this any further? I enjoy the match. Um, excuse me. Um, I think, you know, like you said, they, these two have, you know, more to offer, but I'm not going to, you know, complain about the, the match. I mean, Seth had a, had a match last night. He might have, you know, maybe playing up his knee. You never know. Yeah. It might have been really bothered him. He's had, like, what, 19 surgeries on it? Yeah. Um, you know, so. Um, let, let, let's, hope it's, help- it, it, let's hope it's not really anything too serious. Oh, I know. Let's hope that's not why they they had him lose. But um, I think well, was, considering was, the news that we got later on, I'm I doubt that is why. Oh no, I know. I'm so excited for that. Um, what was I saying? I don't know. All this coffee I drank has done nothing for my brain function. <laughs> for the heat. Um, I think it was the right time for him. To, I, I I feel like I drank some because I was like, oh, it's the summer of Seth. You know, still yeah. Be, you still oh be, oh yes, thanks off. a lot. You jinxed us. But I have I a feeling well, that this isn't the end for Seth, especially considering no, the def- I mean, he is um, Seth freaking Rollins. Yeah. I d- unless, unless, and I hope he's not legit injured, yeah. then I doubt that, you know, it's, uh, you know, he's going to be shuffled to the to the back burner. No, no. 
Um, um, like, and like you said, especially when it comes later. And, you know, it was a good match. I think it was a good time for him to lose, even though, you yeah. know, I was really conflicted. I was talking to my best friend during, and I'm like, oh, it's Seth. And I'm like, it's golf, you know? Yeah. And it's just it's about time they did something, you know? Um, but I can't wait they Dolph. would have used Dolph and Drew to elevate the tag, uh, the tag title scene because Lord need, knows they need it. Yeah, and I'm kind of, I was wondering what I thought they would, and it really does, and I'm kind of wondering what they'll do with Drew. Are they going to add a third person and give them the, I have you no know, idea. The, the tag titles? I mean, I just don't want to see him as Drew's lucky, but I, you know, I like what they have going on and everything. Drew, Drew, um, is, Drew is basically the uh, diesel to uh, Dolph's Shawn Michaels at this point. Yeah, you know, I'm fine with it because, you know, it's, I don't have a problem with it, but, um, but yeah, we'll see. I think it was, you know, like I said, a decent time for him to, to lose. And I think it, you know, we're, and I said this in the, the staff chat, oh, everybody thought that the two of them were screwed after their loss. So it's, you know, it, it's good for them. It'll keep them, it, it helps legitimize their storyline. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I agree with that. Um, Moving forward, like we talked about, the announcement that we got later on in the show was that uh, Seth is going to invoke his rematch clause for next week, and we'll get this match once again next week. Um, I have a feeling, depending upon what happens, we'll determine what happens uh, moving forward with Seth, because especially with all the rumors that have been pointing to this and what we found out later tonight, which I guess we might as well talk about now. Um, I have a feeling that he will be involved in that, uh, that multi-man match for, uh, for the number one contendership for the Intercontinental Championship at Extreme Rules. And he may very well win it. And he may be the number one contender. Um, first off, let, let, let's go into this. Uh, let, let's skip ahead a little bit and, and talk mm-hmm. about this real quick. Um, so, uh, Kurt gets a call from Stephanie. Well, Corbin gets a call from Stephanie. And they decide that, you know, Kurt's going to have a big announcement later on. And Kurt comes out and he's like, we're going to have a multi-man match for the number one contendership for for the Universal title at Extreme Rules. Oh, hey, hey, Liz, when did we ever hear this before? All the time? Not just all the time, specifically. At Extreme Rules? (laughs) Yeah, exactly a year ago, we got this. (laughs) Same exact match with the same exact stipulation a year ago at Extreme Rules for Raw. Come on, creative. You can do better than that. Yeah, they really can. Come on. Don't just be... Just don't be copying the same thing you did last year. Just really shows how meaningless the Universal title is now. But they probably don't even remember... Oh, well, half of the fans don't either, because you never see it. That's true. true. Um, And then, of course, Roman comes out, and he says, Yeah, you know, I beat Brock at, I should have, you know, I officially beat, or unofficially beat Brock at Greatest Royal Rumble. I deserve a shot in this match. Uh, Bobby Lashley comes out also saying that he deserves a, uh, shot in this match. And then for mm-hmm. some weird reason, the jobbers, but not jobbers, I guess, the the guys in limbo, the revival, decide to come out and say, hey, we don't care about you guys, you know, we're, I forget exactly what they said, you know, we're the real top guys or whatever. They did their whole shtick, and it resulted in a tag title match, or a, a tag team match, uh, for a little later on, which we'll talk about later. Um, real quick, did you have anything of, of note to say about this segment? Other than the fact that, uh, creative is just 
you know, copy and pasting exactly what they did last year? Um, the, the second one where Curry announced it? Yeah. It, no, it was kind of a hot mess, but we'll get to it. I'll, I'll say what I have to say about it later when we get to it. Okay. Get to it right before the match. Okay. Um, so, following that, well, we, we get uh, Mac and, after the Dolphin uh, set the match, we got McIntyre attacking Rollins from behind and then, atta- and then hitting him with the Claymore zigzag combination. I was honestly surprised. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of get why they didn't do it, I guess, but I'm surprised Reigns didn't come out during this segment to help Rollins. Every time Seth is in trouble, like, oh, Dean, Dean, Yeah, Dean, well, Dean. apparently... What, what? what? Oh, God, you're gonna give me bad news. Oh, 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 you're ready for this? What What were you gonna say first? I'm, I'm curious now. Oh, I was gonna say, because every time Seth's in trouble, or sometimes wrong until I'm like, Dean, Dean, Dean. Yep. And it never happens. And well, when it happens, I'm probably I'm probably gonna miss it. Well, apparently, <laughs> um, I saw a rumor today that oh he reported to the performance center, and so oh. he's still a little ways away. He's not. They said he should. They're thinking like at the end of the summer after SummerSlam. Yeah, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather he be cautious than that. Uh, oh, no, I'll agree with that. And we also don't even know, like, how much of it's recovering, and maybe he just wanted some... Yeah, that's harm true. Off. That's true. So, um, after that, we get Dolph Ziggler interviewed in the back, and he says, Monday Night Rollins is officially canceled. You can cry online, write a blog about it, uh, but there's mm-hmm. no reboot coming, and that it's their show now. Drew says that they told everyone, and this is just the beginning, the first of many titles to come, and unlike other champions, they won't let it, let it make them soft. I'm okay with that. I mean, they've been doing well so far, so we'll see uh, how this goes moving forward. So the... Yeah, I... Go ahead. No, I was saying, yeah, you know, it was fun. So the following squash match scheduled for one fall. One squash fall. <laughs> is Bobby Roode and Kurt Hawkins. And like I just said, Bobby just destroys Hawkins and finishes it with the glorious DDT. I mean, you knew Hawkins was he was going to lose. I don't say that in the sense of the, oh, well, we knew what was going to happen. I mean, it's it's just game like he was going to lose. And when he wins, I don't think he was going to win against Bobby Roode, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, although eventually when they do have him win, he'll probably like, have this crazy win that you're just like, okay, that's hysterical. <laughs> but, yeah, it was even quicker than, you know, I thought it would be. Well, they're Which, trying to get Bobby some momentum back after yeah, losing course, and getting destroyed course. in the Money in the Bank ladder match. <clears throat> so following this, we get um, Braun coming out <coughs> and uh, talking about his great feats of strength and mighty accomplishments in the uh, throughout his career, including playing the cello. But as great as all of those have been, Money in the Bank is the greatest. He got in the ring with seven other guys and stomped, smash, smashed, and snatched the contract. And now all Brock Lesnar has to do is show his face and he'll cash in and become Universal Champion. Let, let, I, I certainly hope so. We'll, we'll see where they go with this. It's a lot harder to do this when the champion is hardly ever there. I know they would never do it. But especially with how Brock is, or with, especially with like how um, how rarely Brock is around, I would love to see them do something where like they have Braun show up at like some other event that Brock's at and cash in on him. Oh my god, would that not be fabulous? Oh, it would be. It would absolutely be fabulous. Or even just show up. And at other events. Mm-hmm. 
just to threaten him with it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because the big rumor going around right now is that uh, Brock is going to be at uh, UFC 225 to set up, or 226 to set up uh, his his next UFC fight. Um, and it would be hilarious to see Braun just sitting behind him like, I'm coming for you. Better be mm-hmm. ready. <laughs> yeah, no, be um, KO comes in. Braun is surprised to see him after knocking him off a 20-foot ladder. Uh, K.O. says he probably shouldn't be here. Yeah, it hurts to breathe. I, all, all my bones hurt. But I had to come out here to uh, congratulate you. And he says you deserved it. K.O. knew he he would win. And that's why he kept trying to talk guys into alliances. But no one would listen to him. But right now, he hopes Strowman will listen to him, and he needs to have KO help him uh, have a strategy against Brock. Um, And he says him and Braun have more in common than most people think. Everyone thinks they're just angry and hot-tempered, but they're both good guys at heart. And who's watching their back? No one. Um... Braun hasn't needed anyone so far, but, you know, when you get the briefcase and when you get the title, you need someone to watch your back. Uh, KO continues talking this up, trying to gain an alliance with Braun. He comes in, he extends his hand out for a handshake. Braun shakes it, but then doesn't let go, and KO almost gets hit with the power bo- or power slam, but he slips away. Uh, what do you think of this whole thing? I get a kick out of it. I mean, Kevin just has this whole thing down pat, and it never gets old. Um, for me, you know, anyway. I mean, it doesn't seem stale. You know, mm-hmm. it's his. You know, it's his thing. He needs to be bestie. Hmm. Um, After Sammy when got destroyed by Bobby. Yeah, plus Sam. Um. So I get a I get a kick out of it. I when um he was trying to leave and Braun was holding him, it reminded me like, you know, when you have you, the kid is trying to get away from you and you're like holding him back. Mm-hmm. Um so but yeah, it was cute it was funny. I, mm-hmm. I I'm not I enjoyed it. Oh yes. Um next we get a uh locker room segment with uh Sasha and Bailey. Bailey apologizes for last night and says, you know, I was rooting for you. And she says, you know, stop. You know, well, first Banks says that she's okay, but Bailey says stop. She she knows what she's doing. She knows you're continuing replaying the match over and over again, watching it on your phone. And, you know, and they, and, you know, Bailey says it won't do you any good to sit here and sulk. Help me beat the Riot Squad, and I'll help you get some momentum back. And she agrees, and, you know, we get, we, it seems like we get the friendship back for the time being. Um, were you actually thinking that this was gonna be the case of them, like, reuniting, or did you see through this right away? A couple of seconds, maybe a little longer than I was like, oh, good, they're going to make up and we won't have to deal with this nonsense anymore. <laughs> and then I said to myself, oh, you're so stupid. Well, you know yeah. what I was thinking? Wish- you know what I was thinking? You know what I was thinking that just shows just that I'm even more cynical than you are? I was mm-hmm. thinking, oh, this means that they're going to do the four horsewomen match soon, and that's why they need to do this. Oh, that would be even worse. What? That would be that would be even worse. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just over. It. I've never enjoyed it. Um. Bailey is so. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um. Bailey is so boring in her speech. You know. Like everything is just there's no emotion, there's no monotone, you know, everything Well, seems, I think that I mean that's like I can't I'm like, uh huh. I don't know, I can't get into it. 
That, I think, at least in part, I mean, Bailey. granted we've never seen her as a heel, but, you know, it may be in part due to Bailey herself, but also I think it's just because that's how all faces in WWE are booked nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, it would have been more interesting to have seen them do a swerve and have Bailey be the one to turn instead of Sasha, but we'll talk about that more later. Um, we get the Deliers of World coming out, and then we get, uh, the B-team trying to act like the Deliers of World, with Bo Dallas playing the role of his brother. Uh, I was so excited. I was so, so excited. excited. I. I, was about, I, was about, I was about to message you, like, oh my god, we're so close, Brandon, we're so close to getting what we want. <laughs> yep. Um... You could totally see. Totally oh, see you could totally you know? see the resemblance there with him having the full beard. I mean, everybody on social media was like, "Okay, wow, you could really, really see it." They have, um, you know, the upper part of their face is definitely the same. But and sorry, let's give uh, Curtis some props there because he sounded his laugh, which is not a. Easy laugh to mimic. No. He sounded ex- he sounded exactly like that. Oh yes, he when did. He fir- when he first popped up, I was like, "Oh, this is, is going to be fabulous." I mean, some people might think it was dominant. It was in, in a way. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and you can oh, tell man. they enjoyed it. Bray was Bray's expression, like you know, it looked like he was laughing. Was oh, yeah. the greatest. Well, I hope that if we get what we both want which is Mm -hmm. them joining them. I hope they go on and do this whole gimmick once they become Woken. I hope so. (laughs) Wouldn't that be great? It would be wonderful! I just want some crazy reference, even if it's vague, you know, to them, even if it's one of the other ones that say it, to them being, you know... Oh yeah, definitely. Brothers. Oh, but definitely. that was just the little lantern. Oh my god, that was great. You know, and then I, like I them thinking that. they were off, and then like just kind of like slowly. Oh my going. god, it was fabulous. It really was. It's just the little details in this were so good. Oh yeah, you know him, you know trying to turn off the lantern, them not disappearing from the from the screen. Yeah. They they really they really nailed it. Oh, definitely. So, uh, following this, the following contest scheduled for one fall. One fall is a tag team match between Beauty and the Man Beast and the Deleters of Worlds. Uh, this was kind of what you expected. You know, nothing too crazy. Both of the teams kind of just doing their weird things, and Deleters of Worlds got the win. There were two things I liked about the match itself. Okay. One, one that Rhino and Heath weren't just destroyed in two in less than two minutes, mm-hmm. as, as we tend to see them. And the other was that the um, announcers referenced uh, Heath and uh, Rhino's Instagram stories of being on Rhino's boat. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, I think it was Corey. He was like, he's some type of seafaring captain now, you know. And if you don't follow them, or at least you don't, or at least follow Heath on Instagram, you wouldn't know what the hell they, <laughs> what they were talking about. Mm-hmm. So, uh, following that, we get Kurt on his phone, and Constable Corbin comes in and says, Stephanie McMahon is very pleased with the way he's done the job tonight. St- uh, Kurt starts going about to go off about how he doesn't appreciate Steph being in his business, and then uh, K- Corbin's like, uh, she's on the phone. And he's like, oh, crap. Uh, and he... Gets on the phone, and then we go to break, and coming back, we hear the end of their conversation uh, with Kurt saying that he understands, and this is big news, he'll announce it later tonight, we'll, and he'll run all of his ideas by Constable Corbin, which uh, we talked about before, but we'll talk more in depth in a little bit. Uh, Jinder Mahal comes out, 
Uh, he says, as human beings, we must be open to change. And last night, he felt the winds of change. Although Roman won the match, he's won the battle of self-improvement. Just like all of us, Roman is bitter and angry. Uh, Jinder, uh, while well, the Maharaja has found tranquility. So, so what are you, Tetsuya Naito now? You're tranquilo? Mm -hmm. Uh, he runs down, uh, Chad Gable, who doesn't, doesn't get an entrance. Uh, what the hell? Chad Gable further falling, falling down the totem pole. Uh. Poor Chad. Yes, poor Chad. Uh, he's trying to relive his past glories to see the light and see something in Punjabi. Oh yeah, he says, you know, some Punjabi stuff. That just made me think of uh, Mularam, Shularam, and Kali Ma. Uh, so the following contest scheduled for one fall. One fall. Is Jinder Mahal versus Chad Gable. And unfortunately, this was not a full squash, but kind of a squash. With Jinder winning with the Coloss. And, Yeah. Anything else, anything to say about this? Other than Chad, yeah, it, 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 it's very disappointing that Chad's getting destroyed. Yeah, I'm hoping they, you know, find a way to do something. There. It, it seems so random, and then I remember that a couple of weeks ago they had some, you know, interaction, which I think they actually had a match after that, you know, too. So, in one way I was like, oh, okay, you know, they're being a little, I don't want to say consistent, because that's too nice for them, you know. They do, you know, with the following through on some things, but it was disappointing to see Chad um, in, like you said, it was basically a squash match. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, following this match, we go backstage again with uh, Riot Squad wreaking havoc again on uh, things, smashing a crew member's laptop and drawing an R on a mirror. Um, like I said last week. Why are you suddenly starting doing this now? This should have been done from the get-go with the Riot Squad. I exactly thought of what you said last week when I saw it. I was like, okay, this again. Um, doesn't make any sense. I mean, like you said last week, they didn't do it on SmackDown. It very, seems very out of the blue. Mm -hmm. In a sense, almost... This is not even... It's not even adding to their personas. Personas. It seems like they're it almost seems like they're changing them a little in a way, even though that you know so much is staying the same. It just doesn't. It doesn't. I can see them occasionally in the back, you know, with their legit pissed off or something, destroying something like people do. But it just seems like you know these bullies roaming in the hall, you know, being bored. But it makes sense, especially with their name and what their whole gimmick is supposed to be. They're supposed to be a riot squad. They're supposed to cause havoc and mayhem. So it would nice. it would make sense for them to do it. It just feels weird. I'm perfectly fine with them doing it now. It just doesn't make sense of, oh, they're suddenly doing this now after months. Why weren't they mm -hmm. doing this from the get-go? Right, exactly. So, the uh, following tag team contest scheduled for one fall. One fall. Is Bailey and Sasha versus the Riot Squad, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, with R Ruby Riot at ringside. Um, yeah, this was basically just telling the story about how Bailey and Sasha are not on the same page at all. Um,. More so on the level of Sasha trying to one up Bailey. Um and yeah, this was just kind of painful to watch cuz we all knew where this was going after Riot Squad 1. I was hoping not. I was like, "Oh, please no." But then I was like, "Nope, nope, they're going to do it." Mm -hmm. Anything to say about this before we talk about uh, the uh, aftermath, the fallout of this? No, the match, you know, was what it was. I, don't, I have to be honest with you, I don't even think I really paid attention to it. I, I took that time to take care of some other things. 
pretty much they had some uh, some blind tags between Bailey and Sasha because they both wanted mm-hmm. to one up each other. Uh, so, um, Bailey got pulled off of the apron by uh, Sarah Logan, and uh, and thus leaving Banks by herself with Morgan, and mm-hmm. then Morgan got the schoolboy, which Bailey tried to get in to save <laughs> first before it uh, before they went uh, down to three, but she could not get in in time. Uh, so mm-hmm. afterwards, Sasha shoves Bailey away, and, you know, you know, Bailey tries to pull her around to talk to her, but Sasha pushes her again, and, uh, and then ba- Sasha leaves. Um, like you talked about before, um, I kind of wish they would have done a bit of a swerve where it would have been Bailey who would have had the heel turn, but I guess they're you know, Sasha is the more uh, logical choice on this level. So this, I would assume, unless we get some other weird shenanigans or something, mm-hmm. I would assume that this is Sasha's official heel turn now, I would think. Um, we see uh, Corbin and Angle discussing some things backstage before we go to break. Uh, coming back, we see Sasha and Bailey. Bailey trying to chase Sasha down backstage. Ba- or Sasha tells her not to tell her what to do. And uh, Sasha says she's finished with Bailey. We get a brawl going. Um, Sasha pushes Bailey into the side of a trash can. Um, and that's how the, that's how this part ends. This goes on for a little while. Um kind of humorous here with Kurt, you know, in the ring after seeing, assuming, seeing that on the Titan Tron, him saying, I, I can't, con- I can't get the show under control at all. <laughs> yeah, he, he occasionally has some, I, I like her, actually, I, I like her as the GM, I enjoy oh, the yeah. little, cr- little cranky lines he throws out Um, so far. Like I've been saying over the weeks, the Sasha Bailey thing, it's like either do it, you know, or don't. Just straight I think at out. this point, they're doing it. Uh, I would hope. Yeah, no, obviously. And at this, actually, at this point, doing a- it. actually, honestly, it kind of makes sense. As long as they make room for them and actually do it this time instead of, you know, just kind of, you know, teasing it and then not doing it at, at all. If they do this match at SummerSlam... I'm perfectly fine with it because it it's kind of a throwback to where this feud all culminated back in NXT, which was the first NXT takeover Brooklyn. Okay. So, I can understand that. So, you know, have them finish it in Brooklyn again, you know, that that would be a little good that would be a good little throwback. Um so Kurt's in the ring, um, and he says that Stephanie was telling him that Brock Lesnar will defend the title next at SummerSlam, but the question is, who against? And Roman comes out, he says, you know, the the answer to your question is standing right in front of me. I beat Brock at Greatest Royal Rumble, everyone knows it, so I am the uncrowned Universal Champion, uh... Kurt, um, Kurt needs a champion who's here to defend every week, um, and then, you know, we, we get more talk about that, um, Kurt says he's, he appreciates the confidence, but since he's out here, he's got another announcement, Bobby Lashley comes out, he says, you know, asks if Roman is in fact the guy, and says, hey, you've, you've banged your head against the wall for three years trying to beat Brock. You can't do it. You don't have what it takes to finish the job. This may be your jo- your yard, but I've been trying to get my hands on Lesnar since you were a little pup talking about Roman, mm-hmm. which was kind of funny. Um, 
And him just continuing to say that, hey, I'm, you know, I am the guy, you know, I'm the guy that can get it done. Um, then kind of randomly Revival chooses to stick their nose into this, which can, I mean, I, mean, I guess they're trying to make a name for themselves. Um, and, well, oh, before that, um, Kurt makes his official announcement saying that it'll be a multi-person number one contenders match at Extreme Rules. Uh, like I said before, get a little bit more creative, creative, please. Mm-hmm. Um, pun definitely intended. Uh, Revival comes out, they ask whatever happened to earning things the old-fashioned way, and because of that, guys like them always standing in their way, they haven't got the opportunities they deserve but that changed tonight. That changes tonight. They might be WrestleMania level guys, but right now they're thinking about tearing each other apart. So they're challenging them to a match right now. Two of the best single stars against the very best tag team in the world. They'll even give away their strategy, waiting for them to splinter before using teamwork and continuity to win the match. Roman mocks them and tells them to shut up, and he'd be happy to take them to school. And maybe Bobby will learn something while we're at it. And we get that match. Um, we You said you wanted to talk about this further now. So what did you think of this whole thing and, and what we're going to be getting at, uh, at, uh, at, uh, at Extreme Rules? Um... I, I, you know, sometimes you have to throw things together and, and see what you get, you know, from it. Roman and Bobby, I think, I think, I think we talked about them yesterday. Um, Roman and Bobby could be, could give us some, you know, decent matches. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how the verbal sparring, you know, will be, you know, we'll see. Maybe we'll get something good out of it. The revival coming out was so random. Mm -hmm. And you know me, and usually it's like so random. I'm like, what? But, you know, I actually, you first you're like, oh, God, are they going to make these two a tag team now? Is that what they're going to force on us? Um but you know, it was a pretty, <clears throat> pretty decent match. You got this kind of the same thing that you got with um, Bailey and Sasha. You know, them tagging themselves. You know, in mm-hmm. and Bobby, you know, s- stole the win and used the spear, which was you know, kind of funny. So it'll be interesting to see what they, um, what they um, play a little. You know how they play this out, but I just don't know how this you know, helps the revival, you know, sure, they're trying it, to make a name for themselves. It, it doesn't. But that. It, but then they lost, you know? It's like, I would have loved to see them win. Mm-hmm. Well, but, I mean, that's the thing. It's it's Vince McMahon's company of, oh, two top uh, singles guys, even in a tag match, can beat a good tag team, even though the whole point of tag team wrestling is to have that continuity between the partners. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so WWE logic at its finest, people. Um, <laughs> but before we move on, um, what's your prediction for both what type of match this is going to be, um, and who you think may be in it? We already know two people. For the multi-man match? Yes. And what pay-per-view is that? Extreme, Extreme Rules. Rules. Yes. Be something stupid then. La- oh. la- last year it was a five way. So is that what we're gonna get? You know, again? Probably. Or are they gonna have a point? Yeah, they again. may add one extra person and make it a six pack challenge. And did they have any special stipulation? I don't remember. Or was it just? I think it was. Five I mean, it was technically an extreme rules match, but like they never distinctly meant. It, I mean, all multi man matches are no DQ, so like you know, 
It'll, it won't have any extra special stipulation, probably. Oh, yeah. So, who, what was it? Who do we think is going to be in it? Yes. So, those two. Yeah. Seth. Yes. Um, well, unless he wins the Intercontinental Championship back again. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they are, because I think Burnett probably not. does um, create an issue for Dolphin Drew. I don't think he's going to win it back. I think yeah. I could still get my summer with Seth. Okay. Um, so, Roman, Seth, Bobby. Um, I think I know the other two pretty handily if it is going to be five. Finn? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Yeah. That would be Makes my sense. prediction. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we you, you kind of talked about it already, but the following contest scheduled for one fall. Wonderful. Is Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns versus Revival with Bobby and and Roman trying to one up each other, but this time instead of losing, they win because I guess, well, yeah, I guess factions are better than tag teams. Oh. Well, I think it was also Bobby showing up Roman. True. To um. To to what's the word I'm looking for? To build some uh, animosity between the oh, two. Oh, definitely, them. definitely. So it, it was a solid match, but nothing too crazy. Um, Baron and Kurt are walking backstage when they roll up on Finn Balor. He says he wants another shot uh, for the Universal Title. Corbin tells him to consider himself lucky that someone like him didn't embarrass Finn and take it from him. K.O. rolls up and sides with Corbin. Finn calls him stupid for not knowing when Danger is behind him. Danger, in this case, Braun Strowman, uh, who says he's looking out for his buddy Finn, and if they have a problem with it, they can have a tag match tonight, which is exactly what we get later on in the show. I like mm-hmm. how Braun... Um, well, it, can, it it's, it's still kind of stupid, considering the whole storyline going into Mania, but I like how Braun, like, because of Finn almost beating him at uh, on Raw a couple of weeks ago, is now mm-hmm. like siding with Finn, and they, that that's the real team, little big right there. I, I want that tag team now. Braun and Finn. Yes. Yeah, that would be star. That would be great. Actually, it would be. I could definitely get behind that. We get a uh, video package saying that AJ is going to be on the co- the cover guy for uh, 2K19. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that that's fine. Uh, after that, we come back. So the following contest, the, the following weird contest scheduled for one fall. One weird fall. Yeah. Um isn't it normally the the thing of if you don't get an entrance you're gonna lose? Who knows anymore? I don't know. Just when you think you figured them out they change it. And and why are you burying Jose? We've had this conversation like every week. It doesn't make any sense. You call him up with this gimmick that's been, like, five other people's, you know, combined. And he has, like, a quick win the other week, and now he's squashed by Mojo, for crying out loud. Who doesn't even get an entrance. Yeah, it's like... And then oh, Mojo spouts some crap or whatever, and it's like... Nothing makes no sense. Nope. Even for them, no sense whatsoever. Yeah, um, I, I have nothing more to say from this match. Um, if you have anything else to say, please have at it. No, I forgot about it. It even existed until you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, um, this was terrible. Mm-hmm. Absolutely terrible. Um, so following this, we get uh, Sasha going to her car in the parking lot. 
Bailey rolls up and says she's not done with... <laughs> Bailey puts on her inner Braun Strowman throughout this whole thing and saying she's not mm-hmm. finished with her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, okay, so why was Sasha leaving in her gear? She had plenty of time to get dressed. I don't know. This she had don't... plenty of time to get dressed. And and what about her husband? She was she just leaving him behind? This, this, you know? is, du- <laughs> she... this, this is WWE logic you're trying to explain here. But you know what? They could she could have just like all right, fine, like in her top or whatever would have been fine. But it's like all right, you could have threw on like a pair of pants. You know? <laughs> I mean, how are you gonna explain this? But did you get pulled over? <laughs> You're you're looking way too far into this. No, but see, it's it's these crazy little things that bother uh, me. Oh like, no! I, want me. Oh oh no! I completely agree with you, but like, it's just funny because like you know WWE just does not care because they think most like of the casual fans won't pay that much attention to notice. I know, but but like if it was like Bailey hopping in the car, Bailey hopping in the car, she looks like she just came from the gym. You know, she has mm. a long, you know. The, the pants, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. It. Uh, you know, <laughs> it was just funny. My couple of my friends, we were all laughing. We were like, why did she not get dressed in this whole time if she was leaving? You mm-hmm. know, throw a, throw a dress on over it, Sasha. Come on. <laughs> um, Sasha says she's done helping and she's done being your friend, gets in the car. Bailey ah. tries to slap the window and, you know, tries to, you know, Ha- open the door, but Sasha drives off and sends us to break. They could have done so much more with this, and it was kind of stupid, this whole part. Um, but we'll see where they go with this uh, moving forward. Uh, yeah, you know, at least run a rover or something. What? At least run a rover. Yeah, or like, you know, have Bailey like hang on to the door or something and get like. Mm-hmm. like thrown off or something like that you know you could have done so much more with this segment but that's what I'm saying like this is definitely PG era WWE where it's like you know right. you can't do those types of things like the backstage segments and stuff like that are so reduced now that it's just laughable right um coming back we get Elias in the ring singing us a song he launches right into it uh Asking fans what he'd do in hard times. He brings up Seth Rollins cheating and says he got what he deserved when he lost the title tonight. Um, He actually gets through a complete song. um, But no match. So I guess he was just out there to do his song. And that's cool. Uh, We go backstage. Um, Renee interviews Seth Rollins. Um, he says, former stings a little and doesn't want to make excuses. He laid down a challenge, Dolph answer, and he beat him, fair, fair and square. Drew's a problem, but he's a problem that Seth has one week to solve because next week he's invoking his rematch clause and taking the championship back. We, we've, we talked about it before, but this probably won't go Seth's way, Seth's way just because I have a feeling that he will be in that multi-man match for the Universal number one contendership Mm -hmm. and could very well win it. Um, So the main event scheduled for One Fall fall. is a tag match player between Baron Corbin and Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman and Finn Balor. And this was a decent match nothing too crazy but you know each guy got some offense in everyone did their thing and you know it was kind of funny watching Corbin try to wrestle in 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 a dress shirt uh <laughs> well um Gallagher did Oh them. yeah, he he does, he does. You are correct there. Gallagher does do it on a regular basis now. Um, but at the end, uh, Corbin and KO win with a end of days from Corbin on Finn Balor. We'll see where this goes because you know him winning over Balor kind of 
doesn't bode well for Balor getting into mm. that uh into that number one contenders match, but I have a feeling they'll figure out some way to get him in there, which will continue building a rift between Corbin and Stephanie and Kurt, so. Well, I don't know. I mean, I absolutely see your point, but I don't think Braun was, you know, hurt by a loss to, you know... No, no, not Braun. He's two idiots. No, I know. And, and, you know, no, I know. Um, Bala, I definitely can see the argument, but I think the win had to go to Corbin and Kevin if you didn't want Kevin to just seem like you know, this flake that always needs, you know, some best friend to help him through everything. True. And Corbin being the constable now, you know, him having the win still keeps him a little bit of the, you know, kind of, not badass, but, you know, this keeps him a little bit of his old, you know, old self as well. Mm-hmm. And also gives him respect and that fear factor as the constable yeah, exactly. as well. Yeah, that's what that's what I yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I was alluding to or you know, attempted to. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's that's the show for us. Um one to ten on this. Yeah, I pretty much enjoyed it. I enjoyed it I enjoyed it it was a lot of mercy. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it more than I did the pay per view. Mm-hmm. Um the opening segment, Rollin Ziggler, um, the fabulousness that was the B team. Um, um, there was one or two moments where I kind of spaced out, but that's more on my exhaustion level than the show. So I'm going to be, um, I'll give it a seven. Okay. Um, I'm I'm kind of between a seven and seven and a half. So yeah, I'll I'll give it a seven and a half. Um, The opening segment was great, and it served its purpose. Um, You know, some of the things were a bit of duds, but um, as long as some of the storylines that they started to build on this show continue, and they don't just randomly drop them. Then mm-hmm. this is a good show to kind of build towards extreme extreme rules, and then SummerSlam, uh, you get a, a bit of a feud between Balor and Corbin and and Strowman and KO. Maybe build something there, which results in uh, in Balor and KO getting those spots in the multi man match by facing the other two, maybe. Um, I can right. definitely see that. Um, you build up a little tension and friction between Roman and Bobby going into that match. Obviously, you have uh, Sasha and Bailey going at it, and now you know we'll we'll see where that goes. Um, so all in all, they built up some storylines going into this, and you know we'll we'll just have to wait and see where it goes, but. It looks promising at this point. Uh, one more yes. review. Let's, let's 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 not jinx it, Brandon. I, I, I'm I'm <laughs> already and, preparing myself. I I already know you, this, but you and I keep you and I keep jinxing things. So I, I know this. One word review. Um, I'm gonna say pleasing because I generally you know enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say the word that I just used a little while ago, promising. There, it, at least it seems, like like Liz just said, you know, we always think that they're going to start building towards something and it looks like they're starting to get their act together and then they decide to turn around and just slap us square in the face. Um, mm-hmm. case, in point, case in point, WrestleMania this past year. Uh, but, yeah, um, I, it, it seems like they're starting to build some good storylines going into the the rest of the summer, going into Extreme Rules, followed by SummerSlam. So, that just about, uh, wraps it up for us. Hey, Liz, you ready to do this for a fourth time in a row tomorrow night? 
five shows in four days. Yep. Not... Wait, five? Wait, where, where was the fifth? Oh, wait, oh, 205, right? Yeah. Derp. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Money in the Bank. Yeah, no, I, no, I know. Yeah, you're right. Takeover, oh, and, and Money next. in the Bank, Raw, SmackDown, I had and to, 205. I'm the, one, I'm the one who said it, and then I had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, at least it just, at least it won't just be us tomorrow. Well, hopefully. Hopefully Harry will be back and joining us. I believe Harry is going to be back, and then you get to do it again all, all over again on that one no pay per view, but then you have next again. In yep, I've got NXT on Thursday, so. Yeah. Which I make money for, depending on what time he's doing. Yeah. So, yeah, be sure to join us to hear the Fallout for SmackDown tomorrow night, and then us talking about 205 Live. Uh, tomorrow night. So Wait, before, before you sign off, and then, before you sign off, and then there's always the possibility of us with the which we'll get, we'll talk about tomorrow with the announcement of a new show, getting get another podcast. Oh God! <laughs> D- depending upon who's on that, I may or may not even do that because, like, I don't even know um, when, what day, of, like, when they're going to be putting that on the network or even if it's going to be on the network. Uh, for those of you who are completely lost right now, uh, they officially, after a year and a half since the original uh, UK tournament, they have finally announced the UK TV show. It's going to be WWE NXT United Kingdom. Um, no, no streaming information yet. Just dates on when they're going to be taping it, uh, which I believe it's going to be sometime in July. They said. I think so. Yeah. So, so yeah. Be sure to tune in for that. We may have another show to have to bring you. Oh my God! We're we're it's, WWE is going to be the death of us. No, so, we're going to change the name of the channel to the Liz and Brandon Show. <laughs> Pretty oh, sure. much. Pretty much. All right, sir. So yeah, for Liz Biglisi, I'm Brandon Biscobank signing off. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. See ya.